we have an Asus motherboard here and the customer drove from LAX, the airport, to bring it over here. So the customer is about 30, 40 minutes away and he's gonna stay in the area until we fix this for him. The problem is bent pins on the CPU socket. Since the customer drove from far away, I told him that we're gonna give him priority and he can pick up in an hour. Let's take a look at the socket and see what's going on. For the most part, the socket looks clean. I mean, I can tell what area of the socket is damaged by just going like this. We see a pattern. If the light shines differently on some areas of the socket, we know that that area has damaged. So right now I do see damage on this area of the board here. Look at this. Look at this pin here. It's bent backwards, so we have to force it to go all the way to the front. And those pins are fragile. If we go twice or three times back and forth, the pin is going to break. So we have to do it one time. Anything else here? We'll touch up on this pin here. Oh, actually, it's bent. And we told the guy that we're going to unbend the pins, but we do not know if there is anything else wrong with the motherboard. So whether this works or not, that's the job that we are being paid to do. So the job is not guaranteed, but customer still wants it done. We only have two bent pins. Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, so that's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's in parallel with the other pins and as long as it's not touching anything else. So we saved that pin. Let's do the other one. Right there. I mean, I love the mechanic tweezers because the tip is fine and it's thickened. So it's not going to bend easy on us. Okay, so this one here, I do not think that we're going to be able to save this pin because it's already broken. We do not know the job of this pin. A lot of pins on the socket are no connects or they do not serve an important purpose but I do not know what this pin does. Okay, gone. Gone with the wind. We're going to keep it like that and hope for the best. That's all we can do for the customer. And customer understands that that's all we can do. It's very important that the customer understands what's going on and that this may or may not be a fix customer brought in a CPU and he wants us to put that CPU on the board. He's afraid that he may bend the pins again. CPU is right here and okay so the CPU is seated inside and job is done on this one. Now we're gonna work on this notorious <laughs> iPad motherboard that was mailed in because customer attempted to replace the charging flux cable and he said it did not go well. The cable the customer soldered is still here so I do not know what we are looking at. 
Let me see what the customer wrote. Tried doing a charging port repair for the first time, pulled some pads, but thought I fixed. Installed the charging port, but the diode test failed. Please fix. Only sending main board with new charging port attached. Okay, uh, the customer is not expecting us to use the same charging port. I hope not. Because this looks like Hiroshima here. Hiroshima struck again. Okay, missing pads is what's worrying me. We do not know what's going on under this flex cable. Let's remove it. Remove that cable and see what's going on. And hope for the best. We are behind on repairs. Way behind on repairs. Almost 1,200 tickets. And no time to get to all of them. Any customer that's calling in for his device, and his device has only been in the shop for a week, I'm sending that device back and not working on it. We clearly state on our website, our current wait time is about two to three weeks. If you want expedited service, you can pay for expedited and we'll work on it same day. Otherwise, you will have to wait. So I'm working nonstop here, but unfortunately there is so much we can do. Let's start by desoldering the flex cable. We currently have a narrow nozzle. Let me change over to a bigger nozzle. We were at about 1,200 tickets last week. And today we are still at 1,200 tickets. It's not that we are not doing our work. We are fixing a lot of devices, but we have more coming in. And like I always mention, if I feel that the device will require a lot of work, but it has a lower chance of being fixed even after we do the work, I just pass and I move on to the next device. We cannot afford to spend hours and hours working on one single device unless I see light at the end of the tunnel. If I see light at the end of the tunnel and I know if I put the work on this device, the device will get fixed, I will put the effort and work and we're going to charge the customer accordingly. When I first started the business, I used to spend hours and hours working on one single device and that's how I probably got all the experience because of all that time spent working on one particular device. But we came to a point where we cannot afford to spend a lot of time on one single device. right there. Just get rid of it. We have a problem here. A big problem. We have a huge problem here. How are we gonna do this? This has its own separate line. This has its own separate line and we have ground right next to that pin. So we do not want that pin to short out with this or short out with this. But at the same time, this pin has to make a connection with the charging flex cable. This, this, and this are ground pins. And right now we do not care to restore those pads because we have a ground pin here, we have one here, 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 here. All those are ground pads, same here and same here. So we do not need to restore those pads. But we do need to restore this one because this does not look like it's a ground pin and we need to mask this area so this pad does not make a connection with the ground and possibly short out the circuit. Let's see, I have a donor board right next to me here. And look at this. The pad has its own separate line and it's not connecting with any other pad on the board here. So we do have to create a line 
for that pad and we have to mask whatever exposed copper on the left and right side so it doesn't short out. I mean the layer is scratched down to the bones. We're going to start by applying a solar mask to cover all that mess. So we pretty much covered everything. Spread the mask so it can heal faster while we apply UV light. Let's apply UV light. And I'm using the UV light from Mechanic, the same one we are selling on our website. It looks something like this. Takes three AAA batteries. I have rechargeable batteries inside but I never had to recharge those batteries the past two weeks. We're gonna keep UV light for 20, 30 seconds. You can keep it for longer, but let's say 30 seconds should be enough. Okay, so after this, we're gonna clean the mask with alcohol. Okay, that should be enough. So just grab a swab. Put some alcohol and clean the mask. You may still have a thin layer of unhardened mask, but we care about the bottom right there. And the mask is hard. Look at this, solid as a rock. I mean, we use high quality solder mask, and this is the same one that we are selling on our site. I mean, everything around this pad is ground, so we just want to expose the pad itself and not any traces of ground. And that's very difficult because we are dealing with a microscopic area here, a microscopic pad. Right now, based on what I see, it's going to be very difficult to solder jumper wires here. The pads are too close to each other. So let's rewind a bit and maybe think of another way to do it. This is the flex cable here. What I'm thinking is if we can find which pad here connects with which point, then we can run the wire, let's say from here to here, from here to here. But we're going to have to find out where this one connects. Each one of those points connects with one of those pads. We can do the same thing here, run a jumper wire from top of the flex cable onto the respected point that connects with this pad. And we can also do the same thing here, here and here. So we're going to have to run one, two, three, four, five wires. Meter in continuity mode. And let's see. So let's see if we point from here. Right there. So we can run the jumper wire from the third pad onto here. Let's see the pad right next to it. And it's this one here. So the fourth pad will go here. Very good. Look at this. And this one. Very nice. So we already know where those two pads are going. And what about this one? Straight up. Straight up. So we cannot confuse that one. And what about this one? Right there, right there. So this is this, and this one.
Yeah, I can't find that one. I'm gonna have to remember all those pads. Okay, so let's test again. This tiny pad onto it has to be one of those pads here. Which one is it? Right there, right there. It's going to be hard to remember. So we are interested in this pad. We are interested in this pad. And then this one goes here, we have this one, and this one, and then this one goes up straight all the way here. I'm just trying to repeat myself so I can memorize it. Pad one here, pad two here, pad three straight up. This one goes here, the closest point to that pad, which is this one, and this one goes here. So we are good, but I need to mask the exposed area here, since we no longer have use to that exposed copper. Let's also do this. UV light. Now, after we put the flex cable on top, we're not going to be able to know which one connects here and here, so we're going to have to count right now. If we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so 8 and 9. Are you with me on this? I hope you're still focused. So right now, let's go ahead and solder that flex cable. And I'm going to use my barlow lens for this so we can see the whole connector. Because right now we can only see a portion of the connector. I want to be able to see the whole thing. I'm going to be using the 0.75x Barlow lens. And those Barlow lenses come with the microscope that we are selling, which is the same one that we use. For those of you who did not already purchase one, you can log into our website, northridgefix.com, and you can find it there. Now look at this. We can see the whole connector. And that's the beauty of the Barlow lens. You know what? I think I'm going to use the 0.5x Barlow. 0.75 is just too far. So I have the 0.5x Barlow lens now. And let's align. Let's align the window. So it's perfectly aligned, apply some flux. Okay, let's continue. I'm pressing down on every pad so solder can make its way through through the hole on each pad on that flex cable all the way down to the board. And you see we are not getting any bridges because of the flux that we are using. Good flux. 
and we did a very good job. Let me just remove the bottle lens. We do not need it anymore. Be right there. Alright, awesome. Thank you very much, buddy. Thank you, man. Take care. Okay, so we soldered the wire to the wrong pad. It's okay. Very nice. We need pad number nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And for this one, I'm gonna be using the enameled wire. And we need to thin that wire first. It's enameled, so it has a coat around it. Very nice. Now the reason we use enameled wire is so that the wire does not touch any of those pads on the flex cable. But still, I think I would feel more comfortable if we have a solder mask under the wire. Now we need pad number eight. But let me thin that wire first.
have a lot of solar mass, but that's okay. It doesn't do any harm. Solar mask does not do any harm. And let's use UV light to cure that mask. And that's it. The job was a little bit tedious, but like I said, I saw light at the end of the tunnel, so we proceeded with the repair, and we were able to get the board fixed for the customer. That's what we did. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and test. and it's pass. <laughs> awesome job, awesome, look at this. Look at the screen, pass. Amazing, amazing. And before I end the video, I wanna go over this package we got from Anders Lind. Anders mailed over an iPad Pro third gen. He replaced the screen on it and now it does not power on. I'll probably go over this in a future video. But the reason I wanna mention this is because Anders mailed over this, as a gift, hoodie. Mimical 1856, I love it. Thank you very much, Anders, I really appreciate it. And while at it, let me try it on. And fits perfect. Very nice. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Looks good. But it does have perfume on it. I do not know what that perfume is all about. I'm hoping that this hoodie is new. So <laughs> let me just take it off. It's hot in the shop here. Thank you very much, Anders. I really appreciate it. I hope that we're going to be able to fix your tablet. Otherwise, I'm going to have to mail this hoodie back to you. We also have a MacBook Pro that we need to fix. I'll do this probably in a future video. A lot of devices that we need to get fixed. So that's it for now. Time to go home. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.